G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for another trade related video. It's a big time of the year, big time of the year for the channel and uh, really enjoying making trade related videos for you. As it currently stands, I am in London, so I've pre-recorded this uh, in a little bit in advance to release while I'm away, but uh, I thought it would be a fun exercise to kind of go through uh, some of the worst ever trades that Gold Coast have ever done. You know, obviously a big story from last year's trade period was Gold Coast offloading Jack Bowes and pick seven uh, as a salary dump and getting not much in return. Um, but the truth of the matter is, while that's probably the worst trade they've ever done, is uh, there's a list of about seven trades here that I think all stand out as being absolutely horrendous, both in terms of hindsight, but also just in terms of the value at the time. And that's not even considering salary dumps in general. They've done quite a few of those, but we'll go through some terrible trade decisions that they've made over the years. And much gets said of you know the Gold Coast experiment failing and how it's probably not the ideal place for them to have started a team and how Gold Coast teams generally historically in other sports I think uh, you know have tended to struggle. I think the A League is a really good example of that. But the, the fact of the matter is none of that is relevant when you have people in charge making some of the decisions that we're going to go through in this particular video. Before I rattle off the seven trades that I think were hilariously bad, uh, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, but if you have subscribed to the channel already if you could just like this video, uh, that would be great. Maybe wait till you see if you enjoy it and then like it. That's fine. I'm reasonable. So yeah, I've picked out uh, five to seven trades. I think there's seven I've put in here uh, via all the worst trades. And all of these are since 2017, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we'll crack into it. We'll start with the most horrendous one that I've already alluded to. And that was uh, Geelong receiving Jack Bowes and pick seven, for J uh, which became Jai Clark for the record, for a future third round pick. So we're having a very... Very rare situation, uh, well not rare when you're talking about Gold Coast, but Geelong received the two best assets in the trade. So what did Gold Coast get out of it? They offloaded a really big contract for a player that was an academy player originally that they could no longer afford to have on their books. And you know, fair enough, maybe he's not a required player. Salary dumps do happen and sometimes I can see uh, how that is important when, uh, you know, sometimes uh, a team's trajectory changes and they're like, oh, we're stuck with this massive contract now. Maybe we trade it for some draft picks. But they've done the opposite of that. They've given away draft collateral to make this happen. And I, I think the worst aspect of this trade is not only that they lose an established player in Jack Bowes, but they only got a future third round pick back, you know. And, and the thing that I remember about this story is that when it was first reported, Gold Coast pretty much put it on the table that pick seven was there to be taken. You know, it's not as though, you know, they they tested the market and they, you know, they couldn't sell Jack Bowes for pick 46 or pick 86 even. It's not as though they tested the market and realized, okay, no, we need to kick something in to make this deal happen. They went straight on the front foot and said, nah, pick seven's up for t grabs, guys. Jack Bowes on his own for a future third round pick is a pretty good deal. I think he played like 15 games for Geelong this year and even just... You know, he's the best 22 player probably when he's fit. So Jack Bowes for a future third would have been fine. Uh, Jack Bowes and a third round pick for a future third wouldn't have been so bad. Jack Bowes and a second round pick for a future third round would have been horrendous, to be honest. And then to, to cap it off, it's, it's not Jack Bowes at a second. It's Jack Bowes and pick seven. Gold Coast were so desperate to get Jack Bowes' contract off their books that they were willing to part ways with pick seven. And even if that was necessary, even if that was necessary, you don't go on the front foot and say pick seven is available as long as you take this player off our books. Like, uh, we talked about it last year. You know my thoughts. So anyway, that was the, the probably the worst one they've done. Uh, another one that comes to mind is the famous trade, not really famous, but three Fremantle fans will look back on it fondly. Back in 2017, so there was a couple of separate deals here, but uh, Fremantle essentially asked um, the Gold Coast Suns for pick two in exchange for Lockie Weller. Lockie Weller was an original Gold Coast player, um, you know, back in his under 18 days. They took him in the first round of 2014. Um, Gold Coast obviously wanted him to join, and particularly around that time, it was tough to get players to the Gold Coast, let alone someone who wanted to play for them, um, you know, passionately like Lockie Weller appeared to. So Fremantle put up this ridiculous asking price of pick two, and fair enough. Fremantle are pretty good negotiators. That's one thing I'll give him credit for. But sure enough, after what felt like not too long, Gold Coast were like, actually, yeah. Pick two is less important than getting Lockie Weller on our list. Now, don't get me wrong. Lockie Weller is probably, you know, he's a decent player and a decent acquisition, but a few picks in the 20s probably should have got this done. Or I think they had a few picks in the 20s at the time. They could have packaged those up for an earlier pick, give, give Fremantle a late first rounder. He was out of contract, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong on him being out of contract at the time, but even if he is or is contracted, you wait a year and get him at a reasonable price. But sure enough, Fremantle get pick two for Lockie Weller. Now to add insult to injury, 
The pick two that year was Andrew Brayshaw. Now, Brayshaw is a Victorian kid who's happily playing for Fremantle now. And on top of that, he's an outstanding young player and won the MVP last year. So it's not even just a case of Andrew Brayshaw versus Lockie Weller. Brayshaw obviously wins that one-on-one -on -one battle, but it's the fact that they could have had both and they you know, willingly gave up pick two. So just horrendous dealing. It's just the case of whoever's in charge here is not acting in the best interest of the club. Let's, let's move on. Uh, in the same trade period, Gold Coast actually did a horrendous trade with West Coast as well, which I think probably has been forgotten about unless you're a West Coast fan, because this was a fantastic trade for us. So Gold Coast essentially uh, made the assessment that West Coast was likely to drop down the ladder in 2018, which was shared by Robert Walls. Robert Walls tipped West Coast famously to win the Wooden Spoon. They won the Premiership that year. Fair enough. It was fair enough, I mean, for Gold Coast to then bank on West Coast dropping down the ladder. So they would have punted on West Coast, who finished sixth the year before, by the way. They won a final. It wasn't like they were completely... Um, well, no, nowhere near as bad as they are now. They had won a final going into that year. Gold Coast would receive West Coast 2018 first rounder, which so this is a future first round pick, which again could have been top 10 and pick 50. In exchange, West Coast received Gold Coast next year's second rounder, as well as 21, 36, and 37. So let's break this down. The picks that West Coast receive. Pick 21, Oscar Allen. <laughs> pick 26, Liam Ryan, who would win an All-Australian jumper uh, and was a premiership player as well. Pick 37, uh, Jack Petrocelli, uh, who is a reasonable role player and I think he's starting to come on well at the moment. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. Gold Coast pick 50 that they received that year uh, became an academy pick for Braden Crossley. He, paid, he played 10 games and uh, was subsequently sacked after a white powder-related incident. Now, you, like, you can't see that coming as Gold Coast, but... That's all they got out of it. So yes, so that was just the picks that ex exchanged in 2017. In 2018, don't forget, West Coast first rounder swapped for Gold Coast second rounder. West Coast won the flag, which meant there were only six picks apart. So this was all for a six picks upgrade in the 2018 draft, which, you know, after the top first round or so like that, the draft really fell apart. So what happened to those picks? Uh, the Eagles pick that Gold Coast got and eventually found its way to GWS who got Xavier O'Halloran and the Eagles picked up Xavier O'Neill at uh, pick 28. So a couple of Xavier's. O'Halloran's the better one out of those two, but it didn't even go to Gold Coast. So this was an unbelievable trade for West Coast, getting Oscar Allen, Liam Ryan and Petrocelli out of it uh, for literally very little downgrade. So we'll move down the list. I've, I've vaguely ordered this in how in the order of how horrendous they are. So we go back to 2021, and this is another trade with Fremantle who decided they weren't quite done with Gold Coast yet. Uh, Gold Coast received a future second round pick and a future fourth round pick for Will Brody, picks 19, 61, and 69. So sure enough, Will Brody was another one of those players who hadn't quite broken out, was a fringe player, sure, and um, you know heavily contracted, I think. I think that was part of the deal. Fremantle were taking the money off the books. So again, Gold Coast just signing these young players up to way too long of contracts, probably out of necessity a little bit, but at the same time, they've made poor decisions at the end of the day. So it's not even just the fact that Will Brody had a fantastic breakout season uh, that year. I know he's kind of fallen away a little bit this year or in 2023, but um, you know, the fact is Fremantle got the best two assets in this trade. That should never happen. There should always be some sort of trade-off. There wasn't. Fremantle got pick 19 and I'm pretty sure that became Matthew Johnson and they got Will Brody and uh, Gold Coast received a future second round pick and a future fourth. Pick 19, as I said as well, is the first uh, pick of day two of the national draft. Uh, at least it was this year. That should that should hold some value. And uh, Gold Coast gave it away to get rid of Will Brody, who had a fantastic season. So again, well done, Gold Coast. Uh, we'll move on to 2020, where they did this random trade with Geelong. Uh, basically, Gold Coast received a future third round pick and gave up pick 27. Why? I don't think this was a live trade either. So essentially, Geelong got a second round pick for a future third round pick. Why? For the record, that pick ended up being pick 52 the following year. Uh, it ended up at Collingwood, and so Gold Coast didn't even use it. And Geelong picked up Shannon Neal at pick 33. So essentially, we're just looking at a straight-up trade of 33 for 52. Well done, Gold Coast. Then there's another trade with Geelong that is hard to get my head around. This was in 2019, and this one was a live trade. So in this offer, Gold Coast received pick 27, but it cost them a future first-round pick. And don't forget, Gold Coast... Future first probably would have been in the top 10. Actually, I stand corrected. That's not true. This future first round pick turned out to be a part of their priority pick package. So it was actually pick 15 the following year. So again, we're looking at pick 27 for 15 and 64. 
it just it just doesn't make any sense, Gold Coast. You really frustrate me. And Geelong and Fremantle have really profited out of you. I know we did as well, but still. For the record, uh, that pick 15 ended up being part of a deal for Jeremy Cameron. So Geelong did get good use out of it. And um, Gold Coast ended up picking Jeremy Sharp with pick 27. So they gave up a future first for Jeremy Sharp, who um, you know has played 23 games in four years and is probably going to be joining Fremantle, ironically, at the end of this year. We got another pick swap here from 2018 with their arch rivals of all people, uh, the Brisbane Lions. Gold Coast received a future first first for pick 19, a future second, and a future third. So uh, to break it down, Gold Coast gave up a first round pick for a first round pick, a second round pick, and a third round pick. And as well, Gold Coast first rounders are worth more than Brisbane. So uh, pick 19 that eventually made its way to the Brisbane Lions uh, would be part of a Lockie Neal trade. And uh, the pair of future selections and the other selections that were future selections for Brisbane were 23 and 52. So it was 19, 23, and 52. Gold Coast then also used this pick in another deal. So, you know, analyzing trades, like, it gets a little bit murky. But essentially, the first round pick that Gold Coast got out of this deal, they also traded uh, in a deal with Carlton on a live trade in the 2018 draft, I think. So Gold Coast got pick 17, and then they would trade pick 17 along with pick 22 to the Blues for pick 11. So that actually became Sam Flanders joined Gold Coast and the two players that they in theory missed out on were Brody Kemp who went to Carlton and Devitt Robertson who went to the Brisbane Lions because a lot of these picks moved around a few times. So to their credit, they actually probably made a pretty sound uh, selection there. The choice between Sam Flanders and Brody Kemp and Devin Robertson, well, Sam Flanders is probably the best of those three, I would say. But regardless, you know, you just look at the trade in isolation, the, the assets that were given up, it doesn't make any sense. I am aware that there are other factors involved here like you know trading into a future draft uh say for instance where they gave up a second round pick this year for a future third i do realize sometimes that comes down to list spots you know gold coast don't need pick 25 this year they'll trade it for a future third but surely there's a better way to negotiate a deal than simply downgrading an entire round i don't think gold coast have done their due diligence in any of these situations to work out what is actually the best outcome for the club it's been poor you know i tried to focus on um you know just genuine trades that didn't work out there are a few salary dumps in here you know a big one was peter wright for a future fourth that one i know that they they probably were hamstrung by the fact that uh he was you know really heavily contracted and i do have some sympathy for or empathy for how that came about because Gold Coast needed to overcontract players to keep them. But at the end of the day, they're still responsible for their own decisions and uh, Peter Wright for a future fourth sucks. Aaron Hall also went for pick 68, um, which, you know, he was pretty solid for North Melbourne there. Even someone like Jack Scrimshaw was an upgrade from a fourth to a third and he made his way to Hawthorne and he's an okay player. That one's probably a bit inconsequential, so I didn't really include it in the proper video. But those other trades there, I think I had five or six. Those are some of the worst trades of all time. Again, you can think of cases where where trades ended up one-sided, but I'm, I'm talking about the, the decision-making that went into the trade when you have information presented to you at the time. The in-the-moment decision that Gold Coast made in each of these cases were terrible. So uh, that was a fun exercise. I just wanted to go through and uh, relive some of the worst trades that Gold Coast have done. Sorry, Gold Coast fans. This seemed like an outward attack on you. Um, to be honest, it's more just frustrating, especially when you see certain teams profit more than others. And I do care about the Gold Coast. I don't want them to fail. And I, I get frustrated when they do stuff like this. But anyway, let me know in the comment section what you think of all these deals. Is there anything I've missed? As always, I appreciate all your support on the channel. Subscribe to it if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.